Chloroform, also known as trichloromethane, is a colorless, volatile liquid with a pleasant, non-irritating odor. Chloroform is both a synthetic and naturally occurring compound, although most chloroform found in the environment is made industrially as a byproduct of water, sewage, and pulp chlorination. Chloroform is also commonly produced through the free radical halogenation of methane, yielding a number of chlorinated compounds, including chloroform and hydrochloric acid. The most prominent source of naturally occurring chloroform is from marine microalgae. Today, chloroform is mainly used as a laboratory solvent, although in the early 1850s it was used as an anesthetic until its potential toxicity was determined. Additionally, chloroform is used to make other chemicals such as the production of chlorodifluoromethane. And of course, there's the cliched crime fiction use of chloroform soaked rags to render victims unconscious. As a volatile liquid, chloroform can be administered orally, intravenously, or by inhalation. This video will focus on the inhalation of chloroform. After inhalation, between 60 to 80 percent of the inhaled quantity of chloroform is absorbed through the alveolar membranes, indicating that most of the chloroform is available for absorption in the lungs. Primary factors affecting the absorption kinetics of inhaled chloroform are its concentration and species-specific capacities. Alveolar membranes in the lungs do not have many transporters, as they are designed to accommodate the simple diffusion of oxygen and carbon dioxide. As an inhaled toxin, chloroform mainly relies on simple diffusion for absorption through the alveolar membrane of the lung's alveoli. Chloroform is a simple haloalkane in which three chlorine atoms have been substituted for three hydrogen atoms on the methyl group. Chloroform has a pKa value of approximately 13 and a log POW value of 1.9, which means that it is a hydrophobic molecule within the range of drug likeness and can easily cross the alveolar membranes. As a hydrophobic molecule, chloroform passes through alveolar membranes without difficulty. The route of exposure of chloroform is important because the toxin may be subjected to first-pass metabolism in the liver with up to 80% being converted to its metabolite carbon dioxide. Through inhalation, chloroform can enter the bloodstream directly, avoiding first-pass metabolism. After the initial absorption of chloroform, the toxin enters the bloodstream from the lungs, travels to the heart, from where it can be distributed throughout the body. Along with its distribution through cell membranes, some of the initially inhaled chloroform may be stored in fatty tissue cells, mainly in the liver. As the toxin builds up in fatty tissues, redistribution of the toxin may occur. Because chloroform is both lipid and blood soluble, instead of remaining in the alveoli, the agent will continue to cross membranes by simple diffusion and be rapidly distributed throughout the body. Given that the specific target of chloroform is the renal epithelium, we can see that in order to reach its target, the toxin must cross both basolateral and luminal cell membranes. Renal epithelial cell junctions of the proximal tubule can be leaky, whereas junctions of the distal convoluted tubule are more difficult for solutes to cross. The primary target of chloroform in the kidney are epithelial cells of proximal tubules. Given the hydrophobicity of chloroform, the toxin can cross the renal epithelium by simple diffusion. Chloroform is metabolized mainly by phase 1 reactions through both oxidative and reductive cytochrome P450 dependent pathways although it is suggested that the oxidative pathway is the main form of chloroform metabolism. Oxidative metabolism depends mainly on cytochrome P450 2E1 for the oxidation of chloroform to trichloromethanol. Trichloromethanol then spontaneously undergoes a phase 1 dehydrochlorination reaction to form phosgene. If subsequent hydrolysis of phosgene occurs, the oxidative pathway will produce hydrochloric acid and the main metabolite, carbon dioxide. Non-hydrolyzed phosgene will form covalent adducts with enzymes, proteins, and the polar heads of phospholipids. Covalent adducts of the reactive species may interfere with the affected macromolecule's function, resulting in a loss of cell function and potential cell death. A phase 2 glutathione conjugation reaction also converts phosgene to carbon monoxide. In the absence of oxygen, the reductive metabolism, also catalyzed by cytochrome P450 2E1, generates a dichloromethylcarbene free radical. This extremely reactive radical metabolite, 
forms covalent adducts with enzymes and fatty acids of phospholipids. This can result in the loss of enzyme activity and may lead to lipid peroxidation. The balance between oxidative and reductive pathways depends on species, gender, tissue, and oxygen tension of the organism. Almost all tissues are capable of metabolizing chloroform, although metabolism occurs mainly in the liver, kidney, and respiratory epithelium. The toxin is ultimately excreted from the lungs as the carbon dioxide metabolite, or unchanged chloroform. Studies in humans indicate that approximately 40 to 80 percent of inhaled chloroform is exhaled as carbon dioxide and between 5 and 25 percent as unmetabolized chloroform. Trace amounts of both carbon dioxide and chloroform are also found excreted in urine and feces. Only small amounts of toxin are excreted through urine and feces, which indicates that its excretion is entirely reliant on metabolism. As rapid metabolism, excretion, and low levels of chloroform are tested in human tissue samples, the accumulation and retention of chloroform is not expected. The chloroform parent toxin is known to metabolize to the main effector toxin, phosgene. Phosgene is largely responsible for hepatotoxicity and nephrotoxicity. The renal epithelium is a group of endothelial cells that make up the cell lining of tubules in the kidney. Upon distribution, the primary target of chloroform in the kidney was to the epithelial cells of proximal tubules. By comparing two mice models with normal and deleted cytochrome P450 reductase genes, studies have proven that renal proximal tubular cytochrome P450s are critical in causing nephrotoxicity. As such, P450 enzymes are responsible for the metabolic activation of chloroform to its more toxic metabolite, phosgene. Cytochrome P450 enzymes are a family of monoxygenases that catalyze the oxidation of organic substances. Substrates of P450s are metabolic intermediates in xenobiotic substances. P450s are metabolic enzymes responsible for the bioactivation of various chemical compounds. The toxicity of chloroform on the kidney, liver, and other target organs is related to the tissue's ability to metabolize chloroform. Toxicity occurs in target tissues with the greatest ability to metabolize or bioactivate chloroform. The strength of toxicity can be increased by increasing agents responsible for increasing metabolic enzyme activity, whereas metabolic enzyme activity may be decreased by decreasing the responsible metabolic agents. The specific metabolic enzyme involved in the bioactivation of chloroform is cytochrome P450. Through a study of mice response to chloroform, metabolic alterations in the liver and kidney, hepatic and renal cytochrome P450 content, and related monoxygenase activities were measured. Specifically, chloroform oxidative and reductive metabolism, cytosolic reduced glutathione content, and serum markers of nephroxicity were measured. Interestingly, minimal biochemical changes were produced in the liver, whereas almost immediately, the drug metabolizing enzyme system in the kidney was inactivated. Rapid loss of glutathione, cytochrome P450, and chloroform bioactivation occurred. After the initial exposure, altered kidney parameters recovered to normal values not long thereafter. Repeated doses of chloroform exposure result in significant changes in physiological status of renal tubular cells. As a result of repeated chloroform exposure on the retinal epithelium, the incidences of tubular hyperplasia and carcinogenesis are largely increased. The molecular mechanism by which chloroform metabolism results in toxicity is not completely understood, but is likely due to the oxidative dehydrochlorination of chloroform to phosgene. Highly reactive phosgene will bind to and inactivate cellular molecules. Additionally, the production of hydrochloric acid through oxidative metabolism may contribute to the toxic effect. Furthermore, the toxicity of the parent toxin may be decreased by introducing SKF525A, a mixed function cytochrome P450 system inhibitor. Conversely, potentiation of the parent toxin may be induced through the addition of diethylmaliate, which causes an intracellular depletion of glutathione, limiting metabolic ability of phosgene conversion. 
Chloroform has been shown to cause increased incidence of necrosis of the liver and kidney cells in animals. However, this carcinogenic response occurs only under high dose levels of the parent toxin, resulting in cytotoxicity. Chloroform-induced cytotoxicity is a result of toxic metabolites, phosgene, and the dichloromethylcarbene free radical. By forming covalent adducts, these two toxic metabolites induce cell degeneration, vacuolization, and necrosis. By monitoring carcinogenesis indicators in mouse kidney, a strong association is determined between the occurrence of chloroform-induced cytotoxicity by toxic metabolites and hyperplasia of tumor cells. Main symptoms of high-dose exposure to chloroform are chronic liver and kidney damage, as well as CNS depression and cardiac arrhythmia, known as sudden sniffer's death. Although acute poisoning by chloroform is uncommon, the inhalation of chloroform may cause systemic effects such as nausea, convulsions, coma, and death following substantial exposure. Delayed toxic effects of chloroform result in renal and hepatic damage and potential necrosis. That being said, damage to the liver is known to be largely reversible, while toxic damage to kidneys is not. Frequent exposure to chloroform results in kidney damage, which may lead to kidney failure. Renal toxicity is typically more severe in males than in females because the cytochrome 2E1 enzyme responsible for chloroform metabolism is induced by testosterone. Chloroform has been assessed as a potential therapeutic to reduce the symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis. Through experimental therapy, chloroform exposure successfully reduced swollen joints and stiffness in rheumatoid arthritis patients with only mild adverse effects on menstrual irregularity through preliminary testing. <laughs>